This is Jameson from Cooper Fleet Services. Today is January 7th, 2022, and this is Recent Automotive News. Well, this is our first video of the new year. People thought 2020 was bad, then 2021 came along and said, hold my beer. Of course, this year in the auto industry has been mostly defined by the part shortages, semiconductor shortages, the chip shortages, microchip shortage, chip shortage, part shortages, chip shortage, microchip shortage, microchip shortage, part shortage, part shortage, and recalling, recall of recalling, recalled, recall, struggles to work through the number of recalls, recall, recalling, recalls. Everyone's hoping that the shortages will start to subside this year and that life in the auto industry will start to look a little more normal moving forward. CES 2022 is still going on in Las Vegas and GM CEO Mary Barra gave a virtual keynote speech on Wednesday. The speech was geared mostly at GM moving toward an all EV future and the first glimpses of the 2024 Silverado EV. The truck will be available in two models, a high-end retail model called the RST First Edition and a fleet-oriented work truck model. They're touting a 400 mile range, 10.2 kilowatts of onboard power to allow you to be able to plug in power tools, laptops, and other power-hungry devices. The load floor has clearances up to 10 foot 10 inches with the new multi-flex tailgate and the folding back seat idea that I know many people loved in the old Chevrolet avalanches. They're starting to take note of Tesla's infotainment systems and have an available 17 inch touchscreen in the dash as well. Sounds great, but get ready to pick up a second job if you want to be driving the RST first edition model with an MSRP of $105,000. Yes, you heard that right. The RST first edition costs the same as a small house and you get the added be benefit of being the lucky guinea pig for GM's new battery technology. I know what you're thinking. Isn't GM currently going through a $2 billion recall on their Bolt batteries that were bursting into flames and burning people's houses down? Yes. But GM is laying the blame for that catastrophe at LG's feet, and they are using their new Ultium battery platform that is now made in-house for these new vehicles. The fleet model of the Silverado EV is listed at 39.9, and the regular RST model is rumored to range from 50,000 to 80,000. These vehicles will not, hit, will not hit the ground until late 2024, though. Let me know what you think of the new design. Not quite sure what I think yet. GM will be releasing two more EVs with versions of the Blazer and Equinox coming in 2023. Few details are known about these vehicles, but Barra hinted at the prices starting around 30 grand. GM also announced at CES that their electric cargo vehicle, the EV600, is starting to pick up traction with a large order from Walmart and FedEx increasing their original order. These vehicles are also using the Ultim Ultium battery platform. All of these new EVs are exciting for a tech nerd like me, but I'm very concerned about the capabilities of our power grid to support mass adoption of EVs in such a short time. Considering that brownouts and blackouts have been in the news regularly in the last few years, usually due to extreme weather conditions. EVs can use high power chargers that require special wiring and take a toll on power consumption. And if all US households had one of these chargers and a vehicle to plug into it, I think it would quickly overload the infrastructure we currently have. I imagine we will need to vastly expand our power generation capabilities as well, which in the short term will undoubtedly lead to more production of power plants that pump pollution into the atmosphere. Another problem with EVs is a problem we are just starting to see pop up. What do you do with the batteries when they are no longer holding charges? First thing is that the battery has to be replaced, and if it's out of warranty, it can cost 10,000, 20,000, or even more for a new battery. And then after you replace the battery, what are you supposed to do with the old one that is full of toxic and corrosive materials? A new material recycling startup company named Battery Resources Resourcers is opening a huge battery recycling facility outside of Atlanta, Georgia. This plant is supposed to be capable of processing 30,000 tons of discarded high capacity batteries each year. This will be the largest facility of its kind in the US and if EVs are going to take off like the manufacturers expect, we are going to need many more of these facilities to handle all of the waste. That's been it for automotive news this week. Uh, if you like content like this, feel free to check out our website at www.cooperfleetservices.com. Liking and subscribing to this channel really helps us grow and we greatly appreciate everybody that's already subscribed. I hope you all have a great day and a safe new year. Thank you so much for tuning in, bye.